Verse 9 Next to him was Eliaza, son of Dodai the Ahohite, as one of the three mighty men. He was with David when the, he, they taunted the Philistines gathered at Pasdamim for battle. Then the men of Israel retreated. Look at verse 10. But Eliaza stood his ground and struck down the Philistines till his hand was tired and it froze to the sword. The Lord brought about a great victory that day. The troops returned to Eliaza, but only to plunder. Amen. Say, I stand my ground. ground. There are those that have been loosed from various bondages, Amen. from fear. You no longer fear intimidation, no longer fear death. No longer fear men, you no longer fear what women can do, you no longer fear witches, no longer fear political changes or economic changes because you have been freed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then we saw how the Lord told the paralyzed man, Stand on your feet and go home. And we saw how Peter told the crippled man, Arise, stand on your feet. And the man walked into the temple praising God. He didn't go nicely. He didn't go quietly. He didn't go civilized manner. He was not diplomatic. Because what money could not give him, the name of Jesus did. When the name of Jesus begins to work, strange things happen. People behave differently so don't you try to make me behave the way you want me to behave in his presence we all behave differently because you are not me don't expect me to behave don't teach me how to behave in front of my father leave me alone let me express myself because what is done for you is not what he has done for me and what he's done for me is not what he has done for you. You just be free before your father and behave the way you want to behave. Yeah. There is no worse religion like Pentecostal religion. I respect Roman Catholics. I respect the Anglican. They have their way of doing things. Pentecost is power. And where there is power, there is movement. And we can't all move the same. No uniformity here. Now hear this. The Philistines had gathered somewhere to fight Israel. There were men who had gone with David into hiding from Saul. Useless men. Men who were debts who could not pay back. Men who could not be trusted to become somebody's husband. You couldn't trust one of them to become your son-in-law. No risking your daughter for such a one. But when they detect that the anointing was leaving and going to death, they followed the anointing. It's time for you to detect where the anointing is going. Although it is very risky, you better go with the anointing. You can never stay with the anointing and come back the same. You will come as the mighty man of God. As a mighty woman of God. You can never come the same. They returned back and one of them was called Eliaza. When I looked at the Bible dictionaries and, and trying to see the meaning of Hebrew, Eliaza means God has helped me. When his mother got him, she maybe she was almost to die. At the time of Eliezer's birth. And then when she didn't die, she said, call that boy Eliezer. Meaning God has. He's here by miracle. He's here by. And you are here by miracle. 
Your birth is by miracle. Your salvation is not a man's preaching. It is miraculous. It is from heaven. You don't know how it happened, but it happened anyway. Elias said, Israel is running from the enemy. We are not supposed to turn our backs upon the enemy. It is supposed to be them turning their backs against us. We are supposed to, take, to do the chasing. When the people of Israel retreated and ran, retreated from battle and ran away, maybe to go and pray and seek the Lord anew, perhaps to find out where they went wrong or plead with God and God for an intercession to cry unto the Lord more. Eliezer said, it's time to fight back. He said, it's time to fight back. One man, I don't know, he must have had good shoes. And a shield, maybe a helmet too. But what attracts me is the sword. The Bible says that he struck them down. You don't strike them down with a shield. It's a shield of faith. Faith does not strike anybody down. He didn't strike them down by shoes. Shoes is the preparedness of the gospel. He didn't strike them down wearing a helmet of salvation. No, thank you. But the sword is distinct. Take upon you the whole armor of God. And finally take the sword the sword of the spirit which is you people know your bibles I know you like to be prayed for but today I'm taking, telling you put your prayer down and take the sword I know you want to be prayed for some of you want to be prayed for so that you can fall to show how spiritual you are that time is gone while you are falling the devil is fooling around with your life and when you are kicking, the devil is fooling around with your children, with your wife, with your husband, with your business. You are showing spirituality and the devil is destroying you. Some of you want to give to show how generous you can be to the people of God. And the devil is tormenting you. This time, don't bring any of those good acts of yours. Yes. Leave them aside. Yes. When you come to fight, don't bring any of those past successes. They don't work now. You have a battle at hand. Face it. I say face it. Don't play spiritual games to show spirituality. Don't tell me all these acts of spirituality. If you have a need, say your need directly. This man saw the need. He didn't pray about it. No. He said it is time to fight back. It's time to fight back. Jesus. You. It's time to fight back. Yeah. I say, hey, up there. Yeah. It's time to fight back. Yeah. Your family is at stake. Yeah. Your job is at stake. Yeah. Kenya is at stake. Yeah. It's time to fight back. Yeah. God wants people who can fight back now. Yeah. And you can't fight back without using the sword of the spirit. The Bible says he stood his ground. He didn't move. He stood his ground. Meaning, he did not shift back. He stood his ground. If there was anywhere to go, it was to go forward. He became attractive. Every, all the enemy, they couldn't understand how one man could kill them at, at a goal. So they tried again on to discover they were committing suicide. He struck them. When he passed the sword to the left or to the right, it hit a target. He was not practicing, missing, and then got to try again. Everyone he hit, wherever he cut, he did not repeat. Why? Because one cut was enough to bleed him to death. Some he killed instantly. Some died slowly, painfully, but surely. He 
he struck them down it's no time to run around and run away in the pretending to pray you have prayed enough now fight back I say I know you, many of you don't like the Bible you like to be prayed for now turn your prayer into the sword take it swing it left and right when I was in Japan I learned how they make ninjas swordsmen the ninjas can be trusted with their sword. They are told your life is with the sword. The sword is on the, on the left side but his right hand is here. On the sword. On the handle. He is walking using one hand only. But this hand is always at the handle. Because the enemy can come anytime. He has no time to plan. You must now know this book know it I say know it well stop your pride and say amen to that statement stop your pride and say amen to that statement now you must know the Bible you can never know God outside the Bible you can only know God as much as the Bible you know that's why Daniel says in those days there will be a people who know their God. They shall be strong. Hallelujah. And you can never know God away outside his word. I didn't say don't pray. But pray by the word. I didn't say don't sing. Sing by the word. I didn't say don't fast. Fast if the word tells you to. Yes, sir. He swung the sword. The Bible says his hand got tired. His hand got tired. But it glued itself to the sword. One translation says his hand froze to the sword. His hand and the sword became one. So that there was no difference between the sword and the hand. Preacher, if you are hearing me here, yes, sing less. Swing the sword more. Amen. Did you hear me preacher? Yes. I know you won't like it because you want five songs to bring God down. Believe you me, God is there before you sing. Yes. I know you want two choirs to sing first before God is felt. He was there before the choir sang. He's Jehovah Shammah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. His name is Emmanuel. God with us. He doesn't go. He doesn't come by a special singer from Tanzania. Before you came here, he was in here. All you need is to enter his presence. Now, swing the sword. Preacher, Sunday, this coming Sunday, try it. It will work. Try. Try. Ask me. This is not a blessing place. No, no. These are intelligent people. Why do they come here? And there's no concert. And there's no entertainment. It's because something is here. The sword. The word of God. The answer to their needs is here. Because of this sword. They come to see these swordsmen swing it. The master is the one who can kill the enemy behind him without turning. 
Yes. He can, he can see the enemy from behind. He has a sense that he sees the enemy. And does not have to turn. He just swings the sword backwards. He doesn't have to go to plan how to fight. He fights anytime. Until you become a swordsman. Until when you have a problem you can say in the name of Jesus. And before you say hallelujah. The thing is gone. You believe us. If your pastor is not a swordsman. I'm sorry for you. Paul is Anna. It's time for you to begin to use the sword yourself. I say fight. Fight back. Even if you go tired, don't lay the word down. Eliasa had shoes, but the Bible does not mention shoes. Eliasa had a helmet, but the Bible excludes in its record helmets. They are good and the belt, the breastplate, they are all good. They are all functioning, but without a sword you have nothing. Even when you get tired, sometimes you can't pray. And you can tell yourself, the Lord knows my spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Hallelujah. At that time, it's time to take the sword and, and, and quote it and swing it. Yes. Maybe you are too tired to pray. You can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. Oh, Lord, make me lie down in the green. Oh, yes. That's the time to say, where does my help come from? You are swinging the sword and then answer, my help does not come from the hills or from, from the mountains. My help comes from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Behold, he who loves Israel does not slumber. He does not sleep. You are swinging the sword already. You can go to lie down and you have covered yourself. Swing the sword and say, the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. Before you lie down and you are too tired, even if you are dying in a hospital, say, though I pass through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Oh, glory to God! Swing the sword! That's the only way. When things have gone so wrong, Take the sword. So wrong, so badly. Take the sword. Swing it. And shout to the enemy. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. When you come against me, you shall run away from me seven ways, says the Lord. Swing the sword. Don't just go, oh God, I pray. Oh God, my father, oh, don't leave me. Hallelujah. The devil is near here. Don't do that. God is not going to pity you. God loves you. Pity is not love. Stand and swing the sword. Against the enemy of your children. Against the enemy of your marriage. Against your economic enemy. Swing the sword. When you see death around you, you can swing it by saying, 10,000 shall fall on your right hand and a thousand on your left. But it shall never come near you. No plague shall come near your tent. Hallelujah. Swing it. Speak it out. Don't think it. Say it. Look at the Lord Jesus in the wilderness. And the devil comes to him, if you are the son of God. If you, as though he was not. The devil knew he was. But he wanted Jesus to do something to prove himself. So that the devil can say, you obeyed me. He could have told that stone turned to bread. And the stone could have turned into bread. But the devil could have bragged. You did it by obeying me. Sometimes the devil can tell you. I'm going to kill you. Go and pray. So you run to pray. <laughs> At his command. Because you are afraid. Hey. But Jesus said. It is written. It is. It is. It is. Now. Look. Hey. You want everybody to know.
know you? Jump from that place. And I was in Jerusalem. Let them see you jump coming down like an angel. Everybody will follow you. You will make instant disciples. Everybody will be show yourself out. And then he said, you know, the Bible says concerning you, Satan tried to quote the word to Jesus. He shall send angels to hold you up unless you dash your foot against the stone. But the devil misquoted it. You read the Bible clearly and see how the devil misquotes the Bible to suit himself. And Jesus counterquoted that one. Yes. Even when the devil quotes you the Bible, counterquote the Bible. Yes. Come on. He told him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Don't do things to prove anything. Yes. Then he went and told him, Now look at all this. It's yours. I can give it to you just like that. If you bow. Now, those three areas. One is physical, the stomach. Yes. And you know when your stomach is empty, you can become a fool. Yes. You will give yourself to anybody. Yes. That's, that's why Paul says some of these apostles are not true apostles. Their stomachs are their God. They, they preach, but it is their stomach they are looking at. Are you getting me now? Yes. How do you call it? Tumbology. <laughs> Obed calls it tumbology. <laughs> Secondly, it was personal ego to show off, to be known who you are. What a very spectacular thing that never happened in Kenya. Let all the a news, news media come to see it happen so that you may make history. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Hello? Yes. Announce you will be walking on the water. Yes. Let them come and picture you. That is personal, personal, personal. Don't bury that brother until I come. I raise him up. Personal. Are you hearing me? Finally, spiritual. Finally, worship me and I will give you all. What is that now? Spiritual. So the devil comes spiritual, physical, and personal. But the Bible says it is Shout it. Let the devil hear you shout it. But you don't know where it is written. You must know it so that you can quote it. That's my challenge to you. You must know it so that you can quote it. You can't say it must be somewhere in the Bible. Somewhere between Genesis and Joshua. <laughs> Why do you insist that we know the Bible? Because it is only the Bible that will guide you. You want guidance? Don't write SMSs. Call to Isaiah 58 11. And say, The Lord shall guide me continually. All right? If some preacher comes to me and says, Man of God, pray for me. Because the door is open for me to go to Germany and or Europe. I, I, I say, Why should I pray if the door is open? Why should I pray? You see, there is something they, they want to add to the door opening. So that when I go there, I become successful. If you're not successful here, you can't be successful there. Because there it is money. It's not preaching, it's money. But I say to you, preacher, take this Bible and wave it at God. Say, God, 
You said if I serve you, you will supply all my needs according to your riches and glory. Father, I know you are very rich. I'm serving you now and I'm leaving everything. I'm doing the work. You pay the bills. Tell God that. If you are a young man and you know what to do, you read the word and say, where shall a young man cleanse his way? And then you answer yourself by taking heed to the word of the Lord. Amen. I write unto you young men because you know him. If you are an elder like me, then speak to the Lord and say, they that trust on the Lord, they shall be like a palm tree. Evergreen. When drought comes, it shall never know drought because the roots are down to the riverside. Even in old age, they shall be productive. Where are the footballers of last year? Where are the singers? Sasa zao ni zilizo pendwa. Zilizo? Not now. History. Where are the athletes of yesteryear? They are no longer there. They have retired. Migui mekauka, misuli mekauka. But the men of God, preachers, hear me. The men of God, the older you grow, the more needed you become. Oh yes. If you hear a man has resigned or retired, he was never called. He was never called. If a man retires from preaching the gospel, he was never called. He was employed by his church. He was an employee of his organization. Brother, here we don't retire. We are ambassadors of Christ. We only put it down when we go home. Hallelujah. Oh yes. We just go home. We are recalled home permanently. Know the word. Yes. Know the word. If you know it, they can never stand you. Stand on the word. Believe it. Speak it out. Claim it. Sing it. Memorize it. Dream it. Even when you are walking, become a walking Bible. Hallelujah. Fight back using the word. And when you stand your ground, never move back one yard. If there is a place to move, it's forward. In the name of Jesus, I come against the enemy of your family. The Bible tells me, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved with all your house. Now I claim the unsaved loved ones in the name of Jesus. I claim them to Jesus. The parents, the relatives, the children, the grandchildren. I claim them upon this word. Save them Lord. Father, there are those here who are sick. And they have heard me tell them to fight. In the name of Jesus, I stand between you and this congregation. And I fight back. Enemy, you have put diseases on God's children. Now I command you to go away. Very far away from them. And I con command the diseases and the pains to leave. In Jesus' name, you pain, I command you to leave. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. For I said, ask anything in my name, it shall be done. I am the Lord that healed thee. I shall take away diseases from you. I will bless your water and bless your food. I will take, he sent you a word and you heal their disease. He healeth all my diseases and forgives all my iniquities. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
Yes, Lord. Yeah. Father, there are those of us who need money to live on, need a job, who have a business which is failing. You are the supplier. The whole heaven looks down to see he who calls upon the Lord. Your eye sees him. You want to prove yourself strong. And this time, Lord, there are children of yours here who have no food, no enough clothing, no shelter. You have said all these things shall be added unto us. If we first seek your kingdom and your glory, it shall be added unto us. This is your word, oh Lord, and I stand on it. I take my stand in the name of Jesus. I stand my ground. And I command all the supplies from heaven on behalf of these God's people. Let them receive sevenfold.